So I've listened to the debate over Walmart vinyl now for a couple of years. Some people say they love the prices and the selection and the variety. Other people say those records sound horrible. So I figured it was time for me to check it out myself. Here's the scoop. Walmarts here in Canada really don't sell records. That said, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I took the family down to Fargo, North Dakota for a couple of days. We live an hour away from the U.S. border, but we hadn't been in the U.S. since before COVID because the border was closed for the longest time and then there are travel restrictions and whatnot. But now it's a lot easier to get back and forth across the border again. So I figured while I was in the U.S., I would check out Walmart and grab a couple of records and share my thoughts on them. I also checked out the records at Target and I popped into one of my favorite record stores in Fargo, North Dakota. So shout out to Matt at uh, Orange Records. I hadn't been there, gosh, since probably the summer of 2019, but he's a Channel 33 RPM viewer. As soon as I walked in, he's like, hey, made it down from Winnipeg. Nice to see ya. And he gave me a couple stickers from Orange Records in Fargo. And he recommended me a couple of records to check out. So I did. I'll show you those in a second. But I urge any of you, if you're ever in the Fargo, North Dakota area, to check uh, Orange Records out. It's in like an old historic building and it's the records are laid out really well. There's a section with all the new releases. There's a section with all the used records. Really good selection of stuff. And Matt is really good to chat music with and to provide some recommendations. Anyway, as I said, he recommended me a couple of records. And unfortunately, I was in a bit of a rush. As, as, as I said, I was there with the family, so it wasn't really a record shopping trip, right? So I had like a couple hours to myself. Here's one of the records I picked out from Orange Records that Matt, the owner, recommended. This is the debut from Marcus King called El Dorado. And the music on here is kind of blues with a little bit of country, a little bit of R&B, a little bit of rock and roll. It is on Easy Eye Sound, and I believe, I believe I have this right when I say the Black Keys, Dan Oberbach owns or co-owns that label. He also produced this record and co-wrote all the songs. It's pretty darn good. Like I was hoping for some more ripping guitar solos, but it's a little more mellow. It's a little more chill of a record. I've only had a chance to spin it a couple times, but so far I'm digging it. I said his name wrong, Auerbach, not Auerbach. Here is another artist I dig. This is Gary Clark Jr. This is his second album from 2015, and it's called The Story of Sonny Boy Slim. And who is Sonny Boy Slim, you may be asking. Well, though it's a, it's a combination of two of Gary's nicknames. He was known as Sonny Boy, and he was known as Slim. This is a two LP set, Gatefold, from 2015. I am a big fan of Gary Clark Jr., and I had not heard this album. He is, he's probably one at least in my opinion, one of the best modern day blues musicians out there because he plays the blues, but he takes it in different directions, right? There's blues, he combines some soul, some R&B, that kind of stuff. So if you haven't heard of Gary Clark Jr., an artist I definitely recommend, and this is a solid record. Love vinyl? Tell the world with a Channel 33 RPM t-shirt. Check out the Channel 33 RPM store today. When we were in the U.S., I also visited Target because I've heard a lot about Target's exclusive records in addition to the Walmart ones. So I visited the vinyl shop in both Fargo and Grand Forks, North Dakota. There are lots of exclusive colors. I thought the sections were organized well, but there weren't many titles I was interested in. I found the prices there were a little bit more expensive than Walmart, but yeah, overall, Overall, it was well organized. Here are some of the prices for those curious. These are some of the prices I saw at Target. I was interested in Prince's Greatest Hits album, and it was $34.99 US, which is equal to 47 bucks Canadian. I quickly backed away from that one when I saw the price. I saw ABBA's Greatest Hits. I wasn't gonna buy it, but I was curious about the price. That one was $39.99, which is over 50 bucks Canadian. Otherwise, it's all the usual titles you'd expect. Madonna, Fleetwood Mac, Pearl Jam, that kind of stuff. Okay. 
I want to talk about the Walmart records now. This is what I've been hearing about in the vinyl community for years, particularly around Black Friday, I guess. Walmart has that crazy sale. And there's always debate about, okay, should you buy records from Walmart? Should you support Walmart? But again, I was curious, right? I was curious about the records. So I went and checked it out. First thing I noticed is the section was kind of a mess. There were records stacked all over the place, some on their sides and whatnot. So it'd be nice if they took a little bit better care of that section. I also noticed Walmart had a ton of Adele records, Adele 30. There was like more than 30 copies of Adele's 30 and that one wasn't cheap. That again was 40 bucks US, which is over 50 bucks Canadian. So I was like, oh my God, that's a lot of cash. But I did find some cool stuff there and I really wanted to buy a couple records and take them home just to, to hear for myself. Cause again, I've heard from a lot of people say the records sound like garbage. Other people say they sound just fine and the selection is good. So I wanna show you, I wanna show you what I got. And I'm actually getting two records. The first one is A Love Supreme by John Coltrane, obviously a classic jazz record. Some people say it is uh, John Coltrane's best album. This was a recent reissue and it was a Walmart exclusive on this, uh, ex it said, the, the, the hype sticker said, exclusive cobalt blue vinyl limited edition. I don't really care too much about colored vinyl, but again, I did want to check it out. There's the cover. There's the gatefold. There's the back. Back and front are very similar. I'll quickly show you the record here as well. The inner paper inner sleeve. It's pretty much what I expected. And there is the colored record. This one was about $26. So I came home. I threw this on the turntable and I was like, what is this going to sound like? Is it going to be any good? And I have to say, this record sounded amazing. I did not have it in my collection, so I could not do an A, B comparison, which would have been nice. Just thinking, Frank, that would have been nice. Absolutely would have been nice. It wasn't an option. But this, this record did sound really good. So I was impressed for 26 bucks, well worth it. And I also, this is a record I've been looking for for a while. I wanted to find it for a good price. This is a Curtis Mayfield doing the super fly soundtracks. So this one was, what, the, the, what did the hype sticker say here? Limited edition exclusive gold vinyl. I brought this home and again, I was super impressed. First of all, this has the die cut cover with the super fly part. And there's the rest of the cover. And I was like, okay, well, here's the back. If you want to see the back. And I was going to take the record out. I'm like, how do you, where do you get the record out from? It's actually on this side. So you got to open that die cut part out. And I took the record out. And this is not something I expected at all either, but it was a polyline sleeve. It's a colored vinyl. Again, I'm not a colored vinyl guy, but whatever. This one does look cool and I can respect cool looking colored vinyl, right? It can be part of the whole aesthetic, aesthetic of, of record collecting. So yeah, I totally dig it. I threw this on the turntable and again, this record sounded amazing. And again, I had nothing to A, B compare it to. I did not own this, any other pressing, but just from listening to it here a couple of times, I gotta say it sounded really good. Which really surprised me that these two records I bought both sounded amazing. I have, as I said, heard a lot of people say these pressings sound like garbage. So I assume like anything, it can be hit and miss, but Walmart doesn't own their own record pressing plants. They're getting these records from just a regular pressing plant, record pressing plants. They're making all the other records everyone is buying. So I really did not expect them necessarily to sound horrible. I'm not, I'm not doubting people have bought Walmart records and say they sound like garbage. I mean, like records you get from anywhere, there are good pressings and bad pressings. I, I assume that's what it is. So I did think it was interesting. As I said, I've been watching these videos on YouTube and reading comment boards for a couple of years, people debating Walmart vinyl and talking all about it. So I did want to check it out myself. I do prefer supporting independent record stores. 
Orange Records, great place to go. But I now have at least a little bit of opinion on the Walmart Records in terms of they're affordable and they can sound good. And I don't see anything wrong with picking up a Walmart record from time to time or doing all your shopping at Walmart. I don't know, I guess there's places in North America that you know don't have any other stores but Walmart. There are no local record stores. If you wanna buy vinyl, you're gonna to go to Walmart. So it is what it is. I am glad I had a chance to check it out though. And these two records, Curtis Mayfield, John Coltrane did sound really good. All right, 33ers, what do you think? Would you buy records at Walmart and Target? Let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you for watching. I'll be back again in a couple days. Till then, keep on spinning.